Hi there, Sugar Snaps. Today I want to share how to ply a two-ply yarn using two singles. A single is one strand of spun fiber. So I have two bobbins of singles here in different colors so you can see the process as I'm plying them together. You're also going to want some sort of Lazy Kate setup. On this Ashford Kiwi wheel, I have a built-in Lazy Kate so the bobbins fit onto these pegs here, these Lazy Kate pegs, and then I can pull off of them to do my spinning. If you don't have a built-in Lazy Kate, you can use one that's built for your type of spinning wheel that fits your bobbins. So this one, it's two, two pegs attached to this board with some metal rods going through that you can attach your spools onto. So I can take this pin out, slide it through my bobbin, through the other end, and then my Lazy Kate is set up with one bobbin ready to do some plying. So you'd load two bobbins onto this guy. You can make one out of a shoe box. I've taken this shoe box and some long knitting needles, punched a hole in the side so that the knitting needle can fit through. You thread your bobbin onto the knitting needle and then push it through the other side. And I have two bobbins ready to go for a double ply yarn. Check the description below. I have some links to Paradise Fibers. They have some great Lazy Kates that you can purchase. You're also going to need an empty bobbin loaded onto your spinning wheel ready to go. And now we're going to set up a leader yarn onto that bobbin. A leader yarn is a piece of yarn or twine that you wrap around the bobbin to start to spin on. So I'm going to cut a piece about, about a foot or longer in length. I'm going to come on to my, my bobbin and tie this on here so that it's nice and snug on the bobbin, like so, and then begin to spin it onto your bobbin. Now set up your wheel according to however you, your wheel is structured. Mine, the yarn gets threaded through this eye here under this hook, and then I use my orifice hook to pull it through here like this. So there's my yarn setup. Now I have two bobbins of singles spun here and I've spun them in a clockwise direction. That means that the wheel was going in a clockwise direction as I was spinning. When you're doing a ply, you're spinning two or more singles together. You're going to be plying them in the opposite direction. So these were spun clockwise, we're going to ply them counterclockwise. Now, once your bobbin is set up, make sure that you set up the initial leader yarn going in the opposite direction you spun your singles. So for me, counterclockwise, I've got that started. And I'm going to create a little loop in the end here by folding over some of this yarn and tying a loop in the end, like so. And this will make it easy to begin my ply. So now I'm going to pull from my bobbins, take your singles, and overlap the ends like so. And then thread them through the loop on the end of your leader yarn. So you end up folding them over each other about two to three inches like this. So now I'm going to start spinning, spinning it onto the yarn or onto the bobbin. You might need to adjust your tension as you go once you decide how much tension the yarn will need. So I'm gonna get started here and just start feeding it on, figuring out how much tension I need. As you're spinning to adjust your tension and decide where a good tension is, you can add a little bit of tension to your knob. So I'm just gonna twist a little bit of tension and then start to spin. And if it's pulling the fibers through your fingers too quickly and you're not getting enough twist in it, then that's too much tension, that's going too fast. So back off the tension a bit until you find a good space. If you don't have enough tension, what's going to happen is that you're spinning along, the yarn is not getting eaten onto the wheel quite enough and you start getting these twists or the overlaps of twists. So the corkscrews in your spun yarn and that's over twisting and that's because you don't have enough tension on your scotch tension. Then I'm going to hold my yarn in front of me. I'm going to pinch the end of the two fibers like this and have one finger between the two 
to slide through as I'm twisting. So I'm allowing the twist to come towards my finger, guiding it with my hand, making sure to hold the fibers apart so they don't get twisted before I'm ready. I'm holding with my left hand and my left hand is kind of guiding the yarn in onto the wheel. So I'm pulling it out and then sliding my left fingers over the yarn to evenly distribute the twist. So it helps it to make it as even as possible. And then my right hand, I have one fiber my finger in between the two fibers and then my thumb. So between these three fingers, I'm holding the fibers like this in a pinched position. And that helps me to slide it forward so that they're separate and they're coming together at an even angle. So that angle helps to determine where the twist or how the twist is going to end up in the finished ply. As you're spinning, be sure to adjust where your yarn is going over a hook or adjust your yarn guide so that it's filling up your bobbin evenly. And more so than when spinning singles, you're going to need to adjust this more often because the yarn is thicker and so it will begin to slide out from under itself like this one has already moved on. So I'll slide this down a bit and then keep spinning. So it may, might take a while to figure out your tension, figure out how, how much tension to have on your scotch tension in order to have it eat up the yarn as you're spinning it without adding too much twist to it. So play around with it a little bit to figure out how much you need. And you can see my yarn as I'm spinning, the thickness and the thinness alternates. I did pretty rough yarn, so the variegation in the thickness and thinness is quite dramatic. Like this section here is quite thick and then it goes down to a thinner. If you need to pause your plying in, in the middle of your process, you can take the ends, pinch them between your fingers and then wrap them around a knob on your spinning wheel so that it holds it in place. For me, that's convenient because the Lazy Kate is built into my spinning wheel. If your Lazy Kate is separate, like I have this stand here, then you're going to want to put it right next to your spinning wheel and make sure that it's in a safe place that won't get knocked over or disturbed so that when you come back you're able to pick up where you left off. So to do that I would just untwist it, begin to spin, make sure that my tension didn't get messed with while I was gone and then continue to ply as I go. Once you spun all of the length of singles that you have or you filled up the bobbin whichever comes first you'll finish off your length by spinning it onto the bobbin and then you can take it and transfer it to a nitty knotty or use a ball winder to create a ball out of it. Check out this video where I talk about how to transfer it to a nitty knotty and create a skein and check the description below for a link to a ball winder so that you can create balls of yarn to knit from or weave from or whatever yarn projects you have to do with it. Thanks so much for watching how to two ply your hand spun singles. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if it was helpful and be sure to subscribe so you get notified whenever I put out a new video and check the links in the description for all kinds of resources as well as a link to my email update list where you can sign up and get a twice a month email with lots of resources, inspiration, tutorials, and fun stuff for me. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Happy spinning.